Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. I am back with Patty Tykro, who hears amazing messages from the father. Uh, the, the journal entry she's going to share with us today uh, kind of come under the headline of The New Era and Victory. And I don't know about you, but I need to hear all the words of encouragement that I can right now. We are in an intense battle season, but I am telling you folks, what Patty just said to me a few minutes ago, as we chatted offline, we are not alone. And that is so true. The pictures you guys have been sending me, the signs in the heavens that God is painting to encourage his children and keep us knowing he is near. Uh, it's amazing. He loves us so much. And um, Patty, I'm just going to hand it over to you because she's kind of lit today, folks. So <laughs> get ready. I am. I am. <laughs> I am so lit. You know, the Holy Spirit's all over this interview already. And um, he has so much to share. And as I was going over these um, words that he's given me, the focus is on prayer. It is so important to him that we partner with him and that we pray. And um, it is fulfilling his desire as we pray. And I am just taken aback how much he needs us. I, I never in my wildest dreams thought that we would be so needed. And yet he is showing us all of us, um, how much he is requiring of us and asking us, hey, let's get engaged. Let's don't be on the sidelines, but I want you with me. I want you to be the one to um, rule and reign. I want you to be the one to assign my angel armies. So when we come against warfare or we see something in the news he doesn't want us to be full of fear it's the opposite he wants us to take control and he wants us to say hey i've given you power i've given you authority i've given you my name i've given you my blood you don't need anything else take control <laughs> and i am so feeling so blessed to be a part of his army, army of light that he calls us. And um, anyone can be a part of it, right? It's just, it's just, he wants us engaged in this battle. It's such a huge yes. battle right now. And it's, it's a battle, not only for the heart, but for the mind. Oh, amen. So true. Yes. Yes. And, and, and it's like, he doesn't want us to falter. He doesn't want us to give up. He hates it when we get afraid. He hates, he hates fear because that takes over our mind. And, yes. and, you know, when we have fear, it doesn't give him any room to work. So um, he so wants us to be courageous. He so wants us to engage his word. So, this is what we're going to talk about today is engaging and praying. And okay, so um, the first word that I'm going to be going over is October 13th. And I want to give a little background to this word. So this word um, talks about Friday the 13th. And um, in the news, for Friday the 13th, um, I looked on the web and I found this article and it says, former Hamas leader calls Friday the day of jihad, calls on Muslims to take to the streets. And so that was a lot of us were thinking of this and I was. And so it's so good that the Lord addressed this very thing when he talked to me and he said, this is just the beginning is the title of this. And then he said, so you have heard that the enemy wants to use this date to bring chaos and harm this day, Friday, the 13th, 
Well, what a great day for a turnaround. <laughs> I love that. I do he too. He makes it funny. He makes it like he already, in, in that one um, sentence, he already disarmed the powers of principalities right. right there. He just said, okay, that's what the enemy says, but guess what? I've got a whole different plan. And, and he says, and I'm calling you to bring it forth. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. For I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Now, my army of light, let's be on the offense. Now, as we confront this threat. So he's asking us, engage, engage my people. Don't sit on the sidelines, but let's do this. And then he talks about David. For I want you to respond to my, like my David did when he faced Goliath. Declare this, for you come with hatred in your hearts and with the resolve to bring violence to those who do not align with your beliefs. But I come in the name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and I shut down your weapons, and I declare that your mission of death and destruction is nullified in Jesus' name and by the power of Jesus' blood. For this declaration has great power. For you, my army of light, will be used time and again to eradicate evil that would come against my kingdom and my plans and also bring protection to you and those around you. For I have anointed you to do great and mighty things. And behold, this is just the beginning. This, okay, so. Wow, Patty, that is so powerful. You know, is. a phrase that keeps going through my mind lately, whenever I hear a negative report come up, it's like, not on my watch. Amen. You're not going to do this on my watch. The church sat in its pews for many, many years and let yes. all this evil thrive around us and said, yes. oh, I hope Jesus comes back soon. Wait, yeah. wait, we were put on the earth to be sons and daughters who rule and reign with him. Yes. I don't yes. want him to come back right now. Yes. I want to learn everything I was made and do everything I was made to do. I so agree. And I wanted to bring in, you know, he says that this is just the beginning. And what I believe he's referring to is I'm teaching you to rule and reign. And this is just the beginning of my teaching. This is just the beginning of your doing this. Wow. <laughs> and I don't want you to stop. This is the beginning of what you're what you were meant to do. Yes. And I just want to read that scripture, Revelations mm -hmm. 5 10. And I know Johnny Enlow, Enlow speaks of this often. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. That is our destiny. And Amen. he says, Let's let's go. Let's start. Let's do this. And there are so many things that are coming our way now. For this is the time of darkness. This is the time of shaking. And so we need to do this now. Yes. <laughs> and it Man. says, it says rain on the earth. Yes. We don't need to rain when we get to heaven. No. We need to rain now. Yes, absolutely. So then the very next day, the Lord continues and he kind of goes along the same line and this is titled i am fighting for you for i am getting ready to release my glory upon the earth like at no other time ever for this is a major weapon that i will use against my enemies but also to reveal myself to the nations for it will be twofold for my enemies, there is no way to fight it, diffuse it, or diminish it. They are powerless against it. And my glory will descend upon my enemies, and they will have immediate shame and guilt. For their dastardly deeds will be mirrored before them as they are in my presence, a holy God. 
And to those who don't know me and have always believed they were atheists and or an agnostic, they will have an encounter with me and then they can decide if I am real or not. <laughs> and then there are those who have been lukewarm in their relationship with me and they will get a wake up call and a clear decision to make. And then there is you, my remnant. You know, and I just pictured him with a big smile when he said my remnant is like, is like he has this precious love for us because wow. we have been obedient <laughs> in this time of shaking. And it, it brings him joy, really brings him joy. And then he says, for your face will light up and many will fall out. Okay, so let me just clarify this. Many will fall. So we'll, some will just fall flat on the floor because his glory will be so powerful and that's just a natural, um, we'll just be so undone with his, with his glory. So many will fall out of, com um, out of complete adoration to me. And then there will be others who will laugh. <laughs> and they, they will laugh out of complete giddiness at having my glory rest on them. And my glory will bring change to people's hearts but with it, I will bring healing. Mm -hmm. And I just love his love for us. Mm -hmm. He is always so caring. Mm -hmm. He doesn't leave any stone unturned. He wants, he just wants to love us, you know, and he knows how much we need this healing. So he says healing to the body, mind, and soul. And so he talks about the enemy next. And he wants to undo what the enemy has done. For your enemy has so wanted to control time and, and to have control, but he will not have either. He wants to make sure we know. For this is my time to reveal myself and my kingdom. And there will be major breakthroughs and strongholds and principalities broken. Yeah. Why? because of your prayers decrease and because I am fighting for you. Hmm. So this is a major war that we're in, but we have God and he's fighting and we're right alongside with him. And then he, I love this question he has for us. He says, I have a question for you. Did you hear, did you see anything from the threat that was broadcast for yesterday? Ha, you shut them down for I am showing you how to fight and you are fulfilling your destiny of putting the enemy mm -hmm. under your feet. Yes. <laughs> I know. So the scripture that was given to me was Habakkuk 2.14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And then Romans 16, 19, and 20. For while your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I would have you wise as to what is good and guileless as to what is evil. Then the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And I'm believing that that time is now. I believe he's crushing Satan under our feet. He's teaching us how. Yay. <laughs> okay. And then the next one is October 21. And this, um, this has a little background to it. Um, there are, uh, I was with family at the time that I was writing this, but the Lord was giving to me and um even though your family or friends or whoever whoever you're with might be christians there's still so many levels of knowing god and and whether you are believing in the end times the same way as they are pre-trib pre-trib mid-trib post-trib 
I mean, there's so many different variables of what people believe. <laughs> and so the Lord wanted to address this of our disagreements with those mm. people that we love. And I love that he's not afraid to address issues in our hearts, in our lives. It's so good of him to teach us what we need to know, because there are so many um, people that don't see eye to eye and the enemy wants to come in like a flood and cause a lot of friction and pain. And he's the author of that. That's who he is. You know, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And of course, he wants to destroy family relationships and friendships, and but not God. God wants to reveal to us how he wants us to handle it. And this is what he said. But this is what I'm telling you today. Pick and choose your battles when you are around those who don't hold the same beliefs. For I do not want you to be argumentative, but instead be in touch with me constantly. That's huge right there. Huge. He's giving us, yes, he's given us insight. You know, if you want to be successful in your relationships, you got to have me right be by, beside you. You can't do it by yourself. Because, I mean, my flesh stinks. So <laughs> I need to be full of his Holy Spirit. <laughs> But do not think because you have given you have been given understanding that you can impart it to others as well. For I was the one who taught you, and I was the one who revealed truth to you. So if you want to help those around you, pray. Mm -hmm. uh, for I am the one who softens hearts. I am the one who opens the mind to new ideas. Mm -hmm. I know you mean well. But your spirit authored mindset cannot be understood by those who have a carnal viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So I say, stop trying to share as instead of a bridge being built to me, you are putting up barriers instead. So lay down your burdens for family and friends and enable me to do this by praying. For that is when I will open doors to the kingdom. Pray. That's so good. Such wise advice. <laughs> he is full of wise advice. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we try to convince people with our minds to their minds? What we know is of the spirit. And the spirit yes. has got to be the one to communicate it and give revelation light to it so yes exactly so the scripture that goes with this is second <clears> timothy <throat> 2 23 to 26 don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels and the lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but must be kind to everyone Mm -hmm. able to teach and not resentful. Opponents must be greatly instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. And there it says right there, God is the one who leads them to the knowledge of the truth. He is the perfect one to do that <laughs> so that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil. Who has taken them captive to do his will? Yeah. So who but God? Yes. And then Ezekiel eleven nineteen, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will renew, remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Do you know how often the word stone is coming up lately? Really? Well, yes, because it's very prominent in Kim Clement's prophecies okay. about President Trump. Okay. That he will have a stone that takes down Goliath. Mm. And nobody knows what that is. Um, and that it just keeps coming up, at least for me. I keep 
hearing stone um, a lot lately. So, so okay, pray so, into yeah, I was wondering, you know, when Kim Clement spoke of that, I was wondering if he was referring to Roger Stone. Well, that could be part of it. I think it's more than that, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I do think right. that a stone has something to do with the new energy source that is going to be Oh, found. yeah. I yes. think so, too. So I yes. think there are multiple layers and... True. Yeah, True. so it's like, what could it be? I, you know, right, right. I don't mean we may never have even heard of it. So, right. But God yeah. will reveal whatever we need to know. So, yes, He will. But he just will. keep your ears open for stone because, okay, that has just been coming up over and over. Okay, I will. Sounds good. In fact, yesterday, uh, news, a little news clip that I saw of the new house speaker, Mike Johnson, I think is yeah. his name. Yeah. yeah. And he was talking about some impeachment proceedings against uh, 46 uh, for serious charges. And he said, we're going to investigate this and we, we will leave no stone unturned. And my ears perked up. So that's just an example of like how yes. it's been coming up lately yes. for me. Right. Interesting. I love it. Okay, so the next one, it's called He Understands. And again, this has part of this has to do with my own family. And I'm being a maybe a little vulnerable, but this is how life is. Life can be hard with family, and um we just have to adjust and go with how God is teaching us. So I wrote a note before the Lord spoke and it says, so I went to Colorado recently and I said, before we left for Colorado to visit our daughter and family, I had spoken with my daughter-in-law as our relationship wasn't very close and the Lord had nudged me to call her. I did and it was a very nice conversation and she mentioned for me, for me to write to her daughter <clears throat> as a way of communicating with her as she has other pen pals and she writes with that with and she really enjoys it. So I did and I was looking forward to a letter from her when we got back from our vacation. Well, looking through our mail as there was a lot of it, but no letter from my granddaughter. So I got tears in my eyes and instantly, and I mean instantly, the Lord responded to my pain in my heart. And this is what he said. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> I have children like that too, who have rejected my love. And I have hurt feelings, or I have been hurt countless times myself. You know, my children don't necessarily understand that I have feelings too. That is why my word says that I am a jealous God. And that's in Deuteronomy 4.24. I am jealous when my children seek other sources of comfort, joy, and even my wisdom that is so available to them upon their requests. That's in James 1.5. Yes, I am the creator of all things, but I am also a God of love. For I created love. For I created a man and woman to have fellowship with them and to commune with them. For there is in everyone's soul a place that only I can fill. And so often people have tried to fill it with a form of addiction or other vices to fill that void. Oh, how I long for my love to be returned so that my creation can know and experience complete joy for that has always been my plan a plan of redemption for the lost and weary and for me to pour out my love upon them so my army of light i have so much to give to you but i also do not want to be taken advantage of for i want your whole heart and not to be used to get your prayers answered but to be a part of your life my children, 
Come, my children, and remember the most important commandment, and it shall be received and rewarded. And then he speaks of it. One of the teachers, this is Mark 28 through 30, Mark 12, 28 through 30. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of all the commandments, what is the most important? The most important one, asked Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And then I have on here an addendum. So during my quiet time while on vacation, the Lord promised me that my relationship with my family will be restored. So I'm in perfect peace, believing that it shall be. Amen. That's a message so many of us need to put on our refrigerators because we're kind of, a lot of us, an island to ourselves. A remnant is a remnant. It's not a real large group. But right. we've been promised it's going to grow. And yes. we, have, we have to shine love or we're not going to draw anybody <laughs> to be I know. with us. If we're prickly yes. pear cactuses who every time somebody <laughs> comes against us, it's like, no, that's not right. You know, that that's just not real appealing. You know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. So true. It seems like not only is God speaking of prayer, but he's talking about relationships. Yes. And how that is so important to him, mm. not only, you know, vertical, but horizontal. Mm -hmm. It's so important to him that we have a right relationships. It means so much to him. It does. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so moving on. Um, this was October 25th. And the title of this is Be Engaged. So God brought me up into the heavenly realms to see what he sees. As I look from heaven's viewpoint over the world and I see trouble spots throughout with riots, protests, and guns blaring, but then I see the saints' prayers and angels flying off on their assignments and are sent to these trouble spots. And these angels descend right where these violent acts are taking place. And the Lord speaks to me, for well, my remnant, my army of light needs to realize their importance and their need to be engaged at this time. For there are situations that are in the balance, meaning they could go either way, towards darkness or towards the light. Now, I just want to speak to this. It doesn't seem possible because God has already said the victory is ours. But he's saying that in the middle of it, before the victory, we need to do our part to make sure that victory comes to pass. We have a lot of responsibility. And he's trying to let us know what a priority it is for us to stay engaged. And so that's why, you know, the scripture says in James how um, the righteous person has great power in its effects, right? In the prayer. So we need to be righteous. We need to have a right relationship with him, a right relationship with others, because so many things are depending on us and our prayers, because our prayers, um, the heavenly army, Angels are sent on their mission from our prayers, from our decrees, from our declarations. And it is highly important to him that these things get done. So this time is important and that these situations are in the balance and they're waiting for us and our response to what's happening. So they could go either way towards darkness or light, for there are terrorist groups that have entered America and are being sent to certain areas to bring destruction. And these plans need to be crushed now by you, my army of light. 
And I love how he not only tells us the problem, but he tells us what to do about the problem. So he says, so call forth my angel armies to enter their planning meetings to bring confusion, suspicion, fear, and a mindset of being incapable. For this will completely nullify their plans and I will shut them down. Hallelujah. So we do, <laughs> yeah, so we do our part and he does his. And of course, the scripture that says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So that came into, that was mm -hmm. part of that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really so much a part of, of our part to to keep hanging in there, to keep having a good mindset, to keep yeah. full of him and to be at the ready when he mm -hmm. asks us, okay, this is what I need you to do yes. right now. Yeah. So the next one is called Fight Back. This is October 20th, 28th, and this says, for this is the time where the army is looking for whom he may devour. For the enemy? You said the army. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you just have the um, army of light on your mind. <laughs> yeah. Let's start that over again. Okay. okay. So this is the time where the enemy is looking for whom he may devour. And those who are strong in faith are his target. So do not be surprised at this, for he desires that you, my army of light, are inefficient in your prayers, decrees, and declarations, for they are putting him at a disadvantage, for he wants to remove your voice, for your words are blocking his plans, but I say fight, fight off the enemy of your soul, for currently he is using his tool of accusing you. So what can you do to defeat him? My grace. For if he is accusing you in a relationship dispute you have had, forgive yourself and apply my grace. For this is how to diffuse his accusations against you. Don't receive them, but diffuse them. For your enemy, the devil, is working hard to take you out of this battle and make you ineffective but I say, rise up and fight everything you need. You have my word, my authority, the armor, and my blood. Do not back down, but face your accuser, and he will flee from you. And the three verses I have is 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of sober mind. You're Okay, all right. So the three verses that goes with this is, the first one is 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And then Romans 5, 20. But where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And then James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Great scriptures. Amen. Now this last one is today's. And there is so much here that I need to, I need to give some information about this. So in Minnesota where I live, we have had a drought for the last three years every summer. And this last summer was the worst. Um, usually, you know, you have spring rains and uh, lots of, here we have lots of rain in May and June. 
we had earned hardly anything, hardly anything. And my heart was so grieved. Um, I have seen trees that are dead because of it. Um, and I, I love God's creation. I love nature. And it just, it hurts me. Um, and so a lot of these businesses um, don't have irrigation systems, so they die. Mm -hmm. And I just, I pray and pray and pray and pray. And I didn't understand why aren't you answering? I don't understand. I'm praying warfare. I'm doing everything I know to do. And it just didn't make any sense at all to me. And, um, and I felt bad for the farmers, you know, I mean, there was so much involved with when there's a drought and yeah. So every time I'd go outside, I mean, I'd spend a lot of time watering my yard and anyway, so it just, it just was hard on me. Um, my soul was, was in pain, literally. And um, so it's funny, you know, how God teaches us all things. And um, so I was thinking, okay, I, I prayed, I prayed, I've done, um, you know, against warfare and everything. And I took dominion, I've taken, I've done everything I know to do. And then, of course, one thing I forgot was, okay, guess what I need to do? I need to get the word. I need to find a verse, you know? So I go, okay, Lord, let's do this. Let's find a verse. So I did a search in the word, just use the word rain, and I found one. And it was so perfect. And of all places, it's in Joel, Joel 2.23. And it says, be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers. Um, I can't even read my writing. Oh, well, the autumn <laughs> rains and the spring rains as before. So I started praying into that every mm. all, all the time. Wow. And um, so... The first day of autumn was in September. This speaks of autumn. That was the first day it started to rain. Oh, wow. It was oh, the wow. first day it started to rain. Wow, Patty. I know. It was over the top. And the the we had seven inches of rain in like three or four days. Oh, my gosh. And it kept. And then the next weekend it would rain. And I think we had over 11 inches in like two weeks. Oh, wow. And the Lord had promised me that we would have a lush vegetation again. Um, and I thought, really, God? I mean, we got to hurry up and get this done because this is already September, you know. But with all that rain, it came to pass. Wow. I mean, and I, I kept thanking the Lord. I was just thrilled. So this um, word came out of my pain, but it also um, shows the goodness of the Lord. And so um, I'll just read this and then I'll show you the pictures. So this is called victory. And it says, I have asked my daughter to take a picture of this pond at the park a while ago. And with this recent drought, the pond was full of green scum. Since then, she has prayed for rain using my scripture, which does not return void, but accomplishes its purpose. And I opened the heavens. And the promise I gave her that I would make the vegetation lush became, again, became reality. For I made it rain a lot. And he did. Since then, she has taken a more recent picture of the pond, and you will see a big difference. With the added rainfall, the level of the pond rose, and the amount of scum has been greatly reduced. Now, this is a picture of what will happen here in America and actually throughout the world. For the scum represents the evil that has taken over this country and others. 
But through your prayers, declarations, and decrees, and you're taking my word and using it to declare victory, just like my daughter did for the drought, so you will have victory over evil. For through your prayers, my angel armies are reducing the evil on the earth greatly, for the deep state will be dealt with, and they will no longer be in control. And I will reign, and I like him doing that. He talks about R-E-I-G-N, but he also is associating that with the reign. See, he just puts everything all together. And I will reign as the evil powers and principalities are dethroned and taken down. But like my servant Kat Kerr has mentioned, there will be places where people will choose not to follow me and that will be their choice. This is the bit of scum that remained on the pond as you will notice in the picture. But this is how it shall be. For your prayers, decrees and declarations as you partner with me brings the victory. That is beautiful. Just beautiful. It is. It is. It is. And I. And your real Lord, life experience just adds no, to it. It does. It does. He wanted. He wanted to put my own experience and broaden it. He, he like, see what I did here yeah. for Patty. And how much more I'll do for you when you do yeah. the same. And especially um, on a huge more bigger scale because you're praying for the nation you know although i did pray for minnesota but <laughs> yeah yeah so let me um share those pictures with you okay as much as i can here okay so if you can see that that is a picture of the scum now, I'm not seeing the scum. Uh, bring well, it up just. Well, this to... part is all green. Oh, now I see. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that here, hold it up again and I'll use my cursor. See, this is all green algae overgrowth yes. from no, nothing fresh coming in. Right. Right. This is the new. Oh, my look gosh. How, look at it's how it's crystal cute. clear. It is crystal clear. And look, and the water's way up past beyond. It is way it up, and the reflection of the trees. I mean, it's beautiful. <gasps> That's gorgeous. And this is, this what a is difference. Can, yes, and this is where you can see a little bit okay. of the scum. So the, the scum is just left in this corner right here. Yes. Otherwise, yes. beautiful, clear water. Yes, there it is. Amazing. It is. It's funny because, you know, the Lord asked me, I want you to take a picture of this. I always wondered, you know, yeah. how it all It's because to we live parables. Yes. That, because they, that's how we learn. We learn so well from parables. That's why Jesus used it to yes. teach the people and his disciples too. Yes. And, it, and you can always learn. There's a great depth of spiritual truth that goes under the parable that you can search out and learn. Yes. You just end up knowing the heart of God, which is right. the whole point of everything, everywhere. Right. Anyway, so. Yes. And the Lord, I think he wanted to prove himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He wanted, he wanted to use me as an example. And I mean, he, I was frustrated. He wasn't answering, you know, I mean, you could use the whole thing, you know, I mean, absolutely. Give, you know, I mean, he wasn't answering. I could, I didn't understand what is the deal, but it wasn't until the word and his word does not return void, but accomplishes its purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we pray his word, there is so much more depth into yes. our prayers that yes. maybe we don't even understand it all, yeah. but he really wants us to use the word. And that brings to mind. So, a long time ago, when my daughter was living at home, actually, I'm sorry, she wasn't living at home, but she was not married. And she was in a very, very, very bad um, 
relationship. And, and our pastor said, okay, if you're praying and praying and praying and not getting any answers, he said this, find a Bible verse, lean on that Bible verse. He had no idea how prophetic he was. And so I did. Um, Tell us how you, how you, how did the Holy Spirit lead you to these verses? Because this is a tool everybody needs to get a hold of in areas where you're not seeing movement or answers. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I, I wish I had my Bible with me. I, I forgot to bring it. Hmm. Um, just praying. Just okay. I, and okay. I know that, but with, with this rain one, I looked it up. I looked up the verse. Oh, I just good. put rain in the good. search and then Great. I found it. But this particular verse in Jeremiah 32, um, because I felt as a parent, I felt so much responsibility to bring her back myself. Ah, uh, yeah, we do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this particular scripture says, I will inspire her to fear me. I will inspire them to fear me. It took the guilt and the responsibility off of me. And he said that he was going to do it. And then it says, for her good and the children after her. Mm -hmm. It's like, and do you wow. know? Wow. You. And then I also said to the Lord, Lord, if this man isn't for her, because she wanted to marry him. And um, he was so controlling and so awful. Mm -hmm. And um, And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if he's not, if he's not for her, then get rid of him. <laughs> I was just to the point. And do you know, she mm -hmm. called me within days and she said, mom, I broke up with him. Wow. I know. And, and then her heart changed so quickly after I prayed the, wow. I put Jamie's name in the verse and I prayed okay. it like three times a day mm -hmm. and and I wouldn't let go until the Lord answered because mm -hmm. I was desperate. I couldn't stand it that Jamie was so um, controlled and manipulated by this person. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So God's word is so faithful <laughs> and can be relied upon in, in so many different situations mm -hmm. in our life. So true. Wow. Patty, this has been rich and full and inspiring. So I hope all of you audience have just taken the treasure that has been throughout all the words that she shared. She's she's a practical, down-to-earth person, and that's how God speaks to her, and that's what she delivers. We It's not airy-fairy stuff. This is stuff you can put into practice and I love that about Patty very much. Um, Patty, would you mind ending our time together with just pray for the people? Absolutely. Father, in Jesus' name, I cry out to you. And I ask you, Lord, for all those listeners, that you would be real to them and that their prayers would be very effective. And that they would understand and realize their need to partner with you. For well, Lord, we are in a war like, like I've never seen it before. So Lord, how much we need you. And how much, Lord God, that we, um, we cry unto you. And Lord, I pray that the word of God would be a part of everyone's life and their walk with you. And Lord... Um, let them know and be convinced that the victory is theirs as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Patty, for putting this together for us. Um, it has just been wonderful. Thank uh, you for having me. Uh, you're so welcome. feel honored that you would keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> And to the audience who is listening, we bless you in the name of Jesus. And yes. until we see you again, be blessed and at peace in him.
Bye-bye for now.